Estimation, Percentage Error and Tolerance Part 1. Estimates, Error and Percentage Error We need to understand estimates, true value, error and we need to learn off this formula that absolute error is equal to the modulus of true value minus the estimate. So modulus means the positive value of that. So for example here we end up with minus 56, so we just make it positive 56. We also need to know about relative error. Relative error is absolute error divided by true value. And we need to know about percentage error. Percentage error is relative error times 100%. We need to learn both of these formulas off by heart. Find, correct to two decimal places, the percentage error in taking 150 for 153.7. So absolute error is true value minus the estimate, and we take the modulus of that, the positive value of that. So 153.7 minus 150 gives us 3.7, and we get the modulus of that, which just stays as 3.7. And relative error is the absolute error divided by the true value. So the absolute error is 3.7, which we worked out up here. Divide that by the true value, 153.7, we got the question, and we're left with 0 0.02407. And then percentage error is relative error times 100%. So you get 0 0.02407 times 100% is going to be 2.14% to two decimal places. Find, correct to two decimal places, the percentage error in taking 60 plus 150 for 58.2 plus 153.7. So the true value is 58.2 plus 153.7, which is 219.9. The estimate is 60 plus 150, which is 210. So the absolute error is going to be the modulus of the true value minus the estimate. So it's going to be the modulus of 211.9, which we got from here, minus 210, which we got from here, which gives us 1.9. 1.9 is already positive, so we just leave it at 1.9. So the absolute error is 1.9. Relative error is absolute error divided by true value. So the absolute error is 1.9, we got that from up here. The true value is 211.9, we got that from up here. And dividing, we get 0 0.00897. Percentage error is relative error times 100%. So 0 0.00897 times 100% is 0.90% to two decimal places. Next, you need to understand what tolerance is. You need to understand what precision means. Tolerance. The tolerance is one half of the precision of an instrument. This one half is important. And that in general, we can write the true value of a quantity as the obtained measure plus or minus the tolerance. We need to learn this off. A machine produces ball bearings which are supposed to have a mass of 18.5 grams. Part 1. What is the least possible tolerance if a ball bearing of a mass 18.47 grams is not rejected? Give the tolerance interval in this case. So the difference or error is 18.5 minus 18.47 which is 0 0.03 grams. If this ball bearing is not rejected, then the tolerance must be at least this amount, i.e. 0 0.03 grams. In this case, the tolerance interval is 18.5, which we got from the question, minus the 0 0.03, which we got from up here, comma, 18.5 plus the 0 0.03 leaving us with 18.47,18.53. Part 2. The machine incorporates a weighing scales which determines whether an individual ball bearing is to be accepted or rejected. This weighing scales measures weight in grams to three decimal places, for example, 18.536 grams. What is the tolerance of the weighing scales? The precision of the weighing scales is 0 0.001 grams. So this is to three decimal places. Hence, the tolerance is half of this. When we think of tolerance, we always think of a half. 
i.e. the tolerance is 0.0005 grams. So half of this gives us this. You should note the difference between the measurement given as 18 centimeters to the nearest centimeter and 18 centimeters to within one centimeter. In the first case, the true value lies in the tolerance interval, 17.5, 18.5 centimeters, and the tolerance is 0.5 centimeters. In the second case, the true value lies in the tolerance interval, 17, 19 and the tolerance is 1 centimeter. In the first case, we would write the true value as 18 plus or minus 0.5 centimeters, while in the second, we would write the true value as 18 plus or minus 1 centimeter. So be very, very careful with the phrasing of the question. Part three, accumulation of error. So suppose we have two lengths, A and B, two estimated lengths. If we want to find the tolerance interval and percentage error for A plus B, these are the steps we follow. Whereas if we want to find the tolerance interval and percentage error for A minus B, these are the steps we follow. In more complicated situations, we may have to use common sense to choose the largest or smallest possible values for certain quantities to maximize or minimize some other quantity. The following example shows how this works. The lengths of the three sides of a triangle A, B and C were measured as follows. A is equal to 5.2 plus or minus 0.1 centimeters. B is equal to 7.3 plus or minus 0.1 centimeters. And C is equal to 10.6 plus or minus 0.1 centimeters. A is the angle opposite the side A. So we see here's our triangle. This is angle A and side A is opposite it, and side B and C are the other two sides. Part 1. Calculate the percentage error in the measurement of the perimeter P equals A plus B plus C. So part 1. We take the perimeter to be 5.2 plus or minus 0.1, which is side A, plus 7.3 plus or minus 0.1, which is part B, side B, plus 10.6 plus or minus 0.1, which is side C. So we take all the decimals in front of the plus minus, 5.2, 7.3, 10.6, we add them to get 23.1. And then we take the decimals to the right of the plus or minus, 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 is 0 0.3. So we end up with the perimeter being 23.1 plus or minus 0 0.3 centimeters. So the absolute error is the 0 0.3 centimeters. Step two, we get the relative error. So relative error is absolute error divided by true value. The absolute error we worked out to be 0 0.3 and the true value we worked out to be 23.1. So we got those parts from here. Dividing, we get 0 0.012987. Next, we wanna work out the percentage error. Percentage error is relative error times 100%. So we've got 0 0.012987 times 100% is 1.3% to one decimal place. Part two, calculate the largest possible value of A in degrees to two decimal places. Remember, A is the angle opposite to side A. For the largest possible value of A, angle A, we need the largest possible value of A, side opposite angle A, and the smallest possible values of B and C i.e. A must be 5.3 because 5.2 plus 0.1 is 5.3. B must be 7.2 because 7.3 minus 0.1 is 7.2. And C must be 10.5 because 10.6 minus 0.1 is 10.5. So we got the 5.2, the 7.3 and the 10.6 from the question. So we can label our triangle, so side A is going to be 5.3, side B is going to be 7.2, and side C is going to be 10.5. Now we can use the cosine rule, A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos of A, and we substitute into our formula. 5.3 squared equals 7.2 squared plus 10.5 squared 
minus 2 times 7.2 times 10.5 cos of A. We get 28.09 equals 162.09 minus 151.2 cos of A. Gives us 151.2 cos of A equals 134. Solving for cos of A, we get cos of A equals 0 0.8862. And then getting the inverse of cos, we get A equal to 27.60 degrees. So our angle A is 27.60 degrees. So this is the largest possible value of the angle. Part 3. Calculate the smallest possible value of A in degrees to two decimal places. So for the smallest possible value of A, we need the smallest possible value of side A. For the smallest angle, we need the opposite side to also be the smallest. So if we want side A to be its smallest possible value, then we must want the largest possible value for the sides B and C. I.e. A must be equal to 5.1, because that's going to be 5.2 minus 0 0.1. B must be equal to 7.4 because that's 7.3 plus 0.1, and C must be equal to 10.7, because that's 10.6 plus 0.1. So we can label our triangle. We have side A is 5.1, side B is 7.4, and side C is 10.7. Again, we use the cosine rule. We substitute into our formula. Uh, we get cos of A equals 0 0.9045, and we get the inverse function of cos, so we get A to be 25.24 degrees. So the smallest possible value of angle A is 25.24 degrees.